good morning. What we're doing is making a casting shark's teeth. If you haven't watched any of the other videos, we go out shark tooth hunting on the uh, Peace River. I wind up with quite a few shark's teeth. Fossilized shark's teeth from pretty much they're all from the Miocene. Two to twenty odd million years old. We're looking I was looking for something interesting to do with them. And the wife uh, said it's too bad that you can't put them into something so you can see all the sides of it. And the box they're nice to collect, but they're kinda of pointless. We have shark's teeth. We have uh, mouth plates, we have a lot of these cool little ones. Uh, you'll see in the other videos, I've cast them then into these guys. These are silicone molds for uh, making bracelets. You can look those up if you want. Uh, they turned out pretty cool. I took this smallest one and and uh, cast it just with these little baby, little tiny shark's teeth all the way around. Turned out pretty neat. I'm going to have to make some more of those. Wife wanted coasters. I think these will be a good use of the shark's teeth. So this is the octagon. I'm sorry, hexagon. And clear. Tinted, trying to get like a blue green color for uh, to simulate water on oh, this guy. And it turned out pretty neat. It's a, it's a really cool color. Can't wait to see when these come out. Probably tomorrow or the next day. We'll leave them in there for 48 hours, probably. So, two days. It all started with this megalodon tooth. It took a model of it, cleaned it up, put it into, uh, added some supports for it, so that way I could set it into a mold. Created this mold, took uh, full eight ounces of this mold rubber kit to make this mold. Had a problem with it because I had to push it down in order to get enough fill come up on the edges. But put a piece of tape on that and uh, and cast that into this. Now I'm going to change the way this is done. This was an experiment in casting. These are all megalodon teeth parts then cast into a megalodon shape. It actually turned out pretty cool. It's not as transparent as I would like, but from a unique paperweight standpoint, that's kind of cool. Uh, because of the ridges in it from the print, because I printed it out so coarsely and it didn't fill or sand it, um, it wound up with a bunch of lines so you couldn't see through. So what I did was I took and poured on top of it another coat after I cleaned it off and turned it into... Uh, pretty pretty clear. Surprisingly clear, actually. We'll have to see how that's going to turn out. We might need another coat on top. I can still see lines, but a lot of that is solid. What I'm going to do now, since I cast a, a round one in the hexagon, I'm going to do the square. I don't know. Uh, we probably should color it also just because. And into this, I think I'm going to put the mouth parts. These are, these are stingray mouth parts. We'll also find a lot of other odds and stuff, like there's a skewed off a tortoise, or a turtle, part of their, their shell, some turtle skin. 
And these are all out of the Peace River. Cuts through the, the Hawthorne Formation, which is kind of a mishmash of... Oh, that would be kind of neat. Maybe I'll just make this one, maybe I'll make the square out of turtle parts. Which odds and ends little claws off of who knows what. And uh, teeth. There's a crocodile tooth. Maybe I'll just make one out of crocodile teeth. Square out of crocodile teeth? That's a good question. And we've got a bunch more megalodon parts over here. One of these days I'll find a, a complete one. So we'll cast a square. I've been using this amazing clear cast. It's a jewelry grade clear resin. Two parts. Mix them equally. Picked up a gallon of this pour on. This is the stuff that I use to do my countertops with. Works uh, pretty well. Incredibly durable. Uh, so we don't get all sticky. Let's throw some gloves on. And we're pouring. Get this square one square mold testing. Molds are just made out of silicone. Don't use any mold release. There's no need for it. They can pop right off of silicone. And I found that these little Dixie cups, these little red solo cups, are excellent for measuring because they've got lines in them already. Uh, the top is two ounces, so I'm guessing the there's a oh, what do you call it? A a wife's tale that these mean something, but they really don't on a red solo cup. If they do, it's just coincidence. Uh, these are, but they are two ounce cups, so half would be an ounce, and these, I think that line's a little over half. But the nice thing is, you can see the lines on the inside quite clearly, as opposed to using these guys, which have little bitty marks on them. And are expensive. These are, I don't know, three bucks for 50 of them. And the little mixing cups are something ridiculous like nine or ten dollars for a handful of them. don't know how much we're going to get out of this. Looks like I've got about an ounce of these left. Now we'll move on to the big stuff. Now the other two molds each took two ounces without a problem. <laughs> this is obviously not going to be enough. We're just under an ounce here. Should need those clams last night. <laughs> well, it looks like it might work out again. We'll let this settle for a second. There's a B sign. I think I will put that green tint in here also. The A side is your actual epoxy. Um, the B side is the hardener. You want to mix these equally. Uh, worked out to be just about equal. How about that? I'll let those settle and get the last out and out. But you can see I'm poured right up this line that's in there. And I figure now that's two ounces. That's probably about an ounce and a half. So for all intents and purposes, 
This isn't two ounces, that's three ounces in this round one. And three ounces in this hexagon. So three ounces fills the hexagon, but it does not fill the round one. And probably not the square one. Because the hexagon is about seven millimeters deep, and these are about ten. So you can put another three millimeter of stuff in the base of these. of this out of the bottle. We can. We should have enough to have a good pour. But regardless, <laughs> that's what we're going to run with. <laughs> and hopefully I'll never be too old to not laugh at fart jokes. Because they're funny. And that takes it up just above the rim. So on the side. Thank you. The rest of our B. Our hardware. If you pour thick, you got to be real careful not to put in too much hard there. You don't want it to cure too quick. You're doing these thin pours like this. I actually think it might be a little bit better to have a little extra hardener in there because you don't want it to be sticky. That's what happened with the big one. Put this leg on. And I poured that in four different pours. And one of the layers is actually sticky. And it won't be that big. It finishes, after that coat finishes drying on it, it should seal the whole thing in there. That would be right without a plug for the red copper cups. Let me tell you, these are the best cups. Hot stuff hot, your cold stuff cold. And it's a lot easier to pour them into another container like this to mix them. Just got to make sure that you get everything out of it. And you can't run a little scrape. Like and subscribe if you uh, enjoy these videos or you learn anything. You learn new things every day when it comes to crafting from things like this. A lot of videos on people creating things out of resin. A lot of great tips and tricks. To make your life a lot easier if you plan on doing something similar. Well, theoretically, you can clean and uh, reuse those. I don't know why you'd want to. I mean, you could save a nickel, I guess, but. And I think we're going to make this uh, the blue-green also. So, Alexa, set a timer for three minutes. You should stir it. You should stir it for about 10% of the pot time, theoretically. Is that one or this one? I don't know that one. Let's try a different color. Use this. Which one of these did we use? I meant to get blue, but I actually got four shades of green. Because sometimes we all make mistakes, don't we? <laughs> Let's set that aside for just a second, see which one of these we want to use. One's like a blue green, one's like a green green. Well, two of them that I opened. So, it looks like.
looks like the green green. This looks like the blue green. Yeah. This is the one we're going to use. Because it really kind of gave that, uh, that coaster some pop. So far they've gotten a seal of approval from the wife. And I am mixing this incorrectly on purpose. And I'm trying to introduce air bubbles in there to kind of make it look uh, like water. And some of this green, green in there. It only takes a few drops. Two, three, four drops and drop the can. Next time, I'll just add it in near the end so that I can keep some of the swirls. You know what? We can put some darker swirls in that, can't we? Let's darken this one up a bit. So we'll give it a good, thin, consistent color here. And again, I'm doing this incorrectly on purpose. I'm trying to introduce air bubbles into it. Because I want it to look like, I want it to look like water. Or uh, a reasonable facsimile thereof. I wanted to get blue, but I think this is a good mistake because this kind of is like a, a blue-green Caribbean color. Regardless, my wife liked it. So, that's all that matters. You can get some darker streaks in here. Like, how much time's left on my timer? Alexa, how much time is left on my timer? Excellent. One of these days, I should start. You know, hey, Alexa, order twenty pounds of dog food. Just to mess with people who are watching it. All right, that's a really pretty, really pretty color, and we got plenty of air bubbles in there. Alexa, cancel the timer. I think I'm going to add a couple more drips just to make some streaks. I'm going to drop the cap again because I don't learn from my mistakes. <laughs> fast pour because we want the air bubbles. Normally you would pour this very slowly. So that way you didn't make air bubbles. in a couple of videos. We'll have done that. We just kind of streaked it out of here. Some ocean waves. Yeah, I think that'll do. Kind of a nice effect. A little different. on and break it. Now we've got 20, 30 minutes probably, somewhere in that range in order to arrange our parts in this before it sets up. I don't know how much space we've got there. It looks like about the same. There's two or three millimeters that aren't, aren't filled. This stuff moves quite a bit. And with the arrow, with the uh, 
got shark's teeth in it. It really likes to be. They're very dense. Had a problem with the bracelets that I made because I put in a layer, let it sit for several hours, put in a, another layer of shark's teeth facing down, they almost all settle down to the bottom. I wonder what are you going to do on this one? Do something different. Let's take a look at all the mouth parts. think these are thin enough. I think we're probably over 10. We got about 7 millimeters to work with. Now well, those are 715, 735. Scale well, off of something. The scoots are all too thick. Could do one of claws. The other miscellaneous fossils. Teeth are probably a little too. That's five. That's ready. Cool. Oh. Oh. I think we're going to do that. We've got a pile of these stingray parts. Let's see what these look like. Should be nice and thin. Good as a mix. Oh, it's going to work as a add it on top there and let it settle in. Just trying to get some kind of random design in there. Let's see what it'll do with the mouth parts. This guy's probably all small enough. I think we're at 558. That is not. Look at that. But what we can do is do another pour clear on top of this and fill this guy in. So I think I am still going to use these mouth parts because this is a pretty deep mold. And I think I'm just going to arrange them in there. Kind of scatter them around in here. Maybe throw some down on the edge. Oh, now there we go. That's okay. We'll just make this an edge of mall parts. <laughs> Living on the edge of mall parts. That'll oh, work. These guys will all sit down in there. This guy's covered, but. It's a little too wide also. Guys, I'm going to be protected for eternity now. I don't want to deform the mold. Well, that'll work. We're just going to put a whole bunch of stingray mouth parts on the edge here. And stop doing this with the tweezers in here because I don't want to screw up my $2 Harbor Freight bacon tray.
things are pretty cool, in a sense. It's hard to believe that that's a, you know, several million years old. And now, instead of hiding in a box, where nobody can see it, it is going to be captured for eternity. We can talk about the Peace River while I'm doing this. It's a part of the Hawthorne Formation is when it cuts through. It's a really unique formation in the United States. There's really nothing like it. It's a uh, mashup of the Miocene and the Pleistine, not the Pleistine, the Pleistine, but what happened was Florida was underwater for a long time, which created all the limestone that's underneath it. Then the land rose up. really kind of pushed up Ocala. So Ocala was pushed up into the air. It all eroded. And at the same time, there were shallow seas on either side of Ocala, which then eroded and created a bunch of, a bunch of clay and sand deposits covering the covering all of these fossils. Well, it covered everything that died and fell to the bottom. And at the same time, everything was coming off of the Appalachians and washing down into Florida and covering up everything that died down here and was buried and fossilized. So what you got is a beautiful fossil graveyard that's made up of all kinds of animals, both reptiles and horses and sloths and dog bears <laughs> and every other kind of a small mammal that you can imagine. They all they all died and got washed down into the shallow sea and got covered up with sediment from the Covered up with sediment from um, well, that's, a, that's a piece of a shark uh, tooth. They're covered up with sediment from the Appalachians, and then the ground rose back up, and it sat that way for many millions of years, and the Peace River cuts down through some of the high points. So if you ever get a chance to kayak on the Peace River, do a fossil hunting trip too, because there's people that will take you on tours and show you how to find the fossils. And it's just something neat to do. But I hate to have this stuff just sitting in a box. Any other piece to go down in here? Cool. So that is all the stingray parts from the last uh, two or three trips. Now, all these sharks teeth you see in here are actually only from three trips. That's a, that's a piece of crocodile scale there. I'll be darned. So there we go. Let this sit for 24 to 48 hours. Really, 48 the best. If you mix it right, Harder to um, the harder to the resin, and then it's going to harden up. If not, you're going to have a sticky mess. 
The only way I've found to combat that is to actually pour another coat of rosin over it. But I wish we'd get a little bit more variation in this. Like a wave standpoint. Here. Let this sit. Self-leveling. And we should be able to check out our stingray parts anytime we're interested in looking at stingray parts. Like and subscribe if you learned anything. If not, it's not a big deal. You do this for fun and education. And so that way my grandkids can look back and learn something when I'm gone. Have a great day.